Hey everybody, coming at you from out in the woods and we're starting our video and it's starting to rain. <laughs> Behind the camera we have Nick. Hey -o. Uh, Normally, whenever we do this stuff, I do a setup, I pull everything out of my backpack, lay it out and show it all to you, but it's starting to rain on us so we gotta try to set up real quick. Yeah, but and the camera's not waterproof. Yeah, and the camera's not waterproof. We didn't bring a waterproof camera. But, <laughs> Uh, I've been on YouTube 10 years, and 10 years ago I did a rope bed. A uh, rope bed, a rope hammock, and a cradle rope bed. I figured it'd be cool 10 years later to show the double rope bed, <laughs> which is pretty neat. Kind of a rope bed for two people, or a long-term rope bed for, you know, you and your gear. But these are cool. Rope beds are cool because it's almost like a leave-no-trace type deal. Because, uh... There's a trend now on YouTube of people building all these little forts where they're sawing down half a forest and building these permanent structures. That's great. That's fantastic if you own property. But if you're in one area and back out the next day, you can't cut down half the forest and build, you know, Fort Knox. <laughs> you got to get in, set up, and get out. And uh, yes, there's hammocks. I know what a hammock is, but once you set a hammock up a thousandth time, you know, well, I've kids. never heard of a hammock. What is that? <laughs> What's a hammock? Hammocks are great, you know, but sometimes you got to add a little bit of spice to things, and uh, just I don't know, making making beds out of rope and shelters out of rope, elevating, getting off the ground, away from the ants and things is just it's cool. It's something different. It's something for having fun. So, what we need is four trees, and uh, <clears throat> that's another thing about the beauty of rope is you just. It doesn't matter what the spacing is. You adjust it. You know, you just, your rope, you stretch your rope and you adjust to it. So, uh, these are pretty far apart. Maybe too far apart, but we're going to try to make these work. So, what we're going to do is start getting everything out and getting to winding rope around these four trees. <laughs> All right. What do you think you want to add, Nick? Uh, yeah. Should have done this before it started raining. We should have. <laughs> I hope it's not going to rain hard tonight. That's going to be terrible. we got a very late start. So, all right, as you see now, luckily, the rain has kind of slacked up just a little bit, which is a relief. <laughs> but I got the first 50 feet of uh, rope here. Now, this is uh, Rothko 3-8's rope. Uh, before, uh, some of y'all might think that uh, a bunch of rope is too heavy to carry. This is not climbing rope. It's really not that heavy. It's like a, a polypropylene uh, rope. So, not that big of a deal. But the first thing that you want to do is you want to pick out your trees. And uh, I think these are somewhere around five to six feet apart this ways. And then long ways, they're about probably ten feet. Uh, you would prefer seven to eight feet. But sometimes you got to take what you can get. So, the first thing you want to do is do an outer barrier. A double rope outer barrier. And then with your second spool, you want to start in the middle and come straight across the middle and then you just start zigzagging in all different directions okay once you've got that done then what you can do is you can uh, I'll show you how to start going across the ways now for the roof you don't necessarily have to have rope you could use paracord but we brought rope and paracord so we're just gonna we're gonna see how that goes all right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here in the middle As you can see now, what I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth through here. <clears throat> the more rope, the better. And it's honestly, you could honestly put probably three people on this thing. It takes a little bit of work to get the middle done. You're just bobbing up and down here. Yeah, but in the end it's worth it. Are you having fun? Oh yeah, ain't you? <laughs> Why not? Something was just crawling on my hand. 
what you're looking at now is right at a hundred feet of rope okay uh, I can't remember how much it weighs but it wasn't really that heavy especially not when you're considering that two people can sleep in this very comfortably possibly if you weave it right three or four depending on the weight but there's ways of bracing the middle with either sticks or overhead ropes okay so what you want to do now is you want to take 25 feet of rope and you just want to weave it across like this to keep these from spreading out. So let's do that now. Usually what I like to do is I grab one in the middle and curve it over. That kind of keeps it locked into place. And then when I come out here, I like to grab one here and wrap it around just like that. and feed some rope out and throw it over. Just like that. We're gonna grab a couple in the middle here again. And it's like you're just weaving a big old spider web. Just like that. Making a bed for the night. All right. Just a handful of three ropes right here. No, actually. Let's do this, because I'm going to want to pull that one rope over a little bit. I know it looks like we're just rope. tying this everywhere, yes. but trust us, it will work out. <laughs> yes. All right, so what we have is we have our spider web woven, spider web bed. So now what you want to do is you want to put some, uh, some more rope overhead in an X shape. That way you can pull up the middle so that it doesn't sag so bad. You don't have to do this on a single rope bed, but you do have to do it on this one. Right, pull it as tight as you can get it, like that. And wrap around. Just like that. And then come on back. rain's picking back up so we got to hurry up <clears throat> now what you want to do next is after you've got an upper X put in you just want to start tying off the bottom there and you want to start weaving and pulling this up you want this whole structure to come up just like this because what you're doing is you're you're doubling the strength of it see how I'm pulling all this up it looks like a mess, but it's not. It actually works. This looks like somebody's going to be confused on how to get in there properly. <laughs> well, you get in from each side. What you're doing is weaving that in, just like that. I gotta go around to the other side. See now what I've done is I filled in all of the big gaps now with this uh, paracord. And what that's gonna do is keep everything from spreading out. Now as a further, it's, it's, getting, it's getting very light, getting very dark. So I'm gonna have to do the other side off camera real quick. Well actually Nick will have to come and do it. But now on this side, what you want to do is after you've woven this, you want to put a moving blanket on it. Now, 
moving blankets are good. Some of you may say, why not use a poncho? Well, poncho is not quite, uh, I mean a poncho liner, a poncho liner is not quite as thick. So, what you want to do is just kind of put this in here, like this. Keep this in here. You, would, you want to kind of wrap it around with it. I'll do the other side and wrap it around. So let's see if I can lay inside here and make it any, any better. <coughs> I say now they're not spreading out. Now they're perfect. Yeah, now it looks is, better. Yeah, that's a lot better right there. Alright, so I'm going to do the other side real quick and then We'll put the cover on it, okay? Does it look comfy, Nick? Yeah. Rock on. Get a little overhang there that you could just use as a blanket. Yeah, it's true. You had one from both sides. Oh, and another thing that Nick noticed, if the weather gets real bad, what you can do is you can crawl under this thing, and all this maze of rope will protect you from falling branches. So that's pretty cool, too. All right. going to do. I've got the paracord woven on each side where we'll be sleeping on each side. And if you wanted to, you could uh, weave you a little shelf right here to put stuff. Or if it's as big as it is like this, you can just take your pack and just set your pack at the end. Somewhere near a curry or over in the middle. Just like that. That's full. That's got food in it so it's still a little heavy. Now up top what you want to do is you want to do an angled roof and you want to do the frame of it all the way around and then to keep from sagging in the middle you want to put an X in the middle right here and now you want to put a tarp over it. So, let's see what we can do about putting a tarp overhead. Now on one end, I'm going to use some uh, tarp clip. Hey, I think that's going to be just about right for that, Nick. Yep. Let me get those clips out. I don't know if I've ever shown these before. Yeah, I think I've shown them before. These are, they're called sh shark clips because they look like a shark. <laughs> so let's put a couple on the back side and then I'll put a couple on the front side. Let's throw one on the ground right near the cameraman. Good thing it's <laughs> right near the cameraman. Yeah. The cameraman can. Wasn't that a song? Yeah. I got these little black things that keep landing on me. That ain't good, Nick. They're all over me. They keep... can't tell if they're fleas or chiggers or That's what. Why. That's why... I can't I tell where they're coming from. I just keep... I'm standing up here, but I keep uh, feeling little bite marks on my arm. That's why old Dave wears a long sleeve. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't wear long sleeves ever. So you can see a little mark right there where one bit me earlier. I don't know what they are. They just Nick, keep. This is gonna be perfect. Keep looking like down. These trees were meant. Meant for the for, perfect shelter. Meant for this tarp. So there we go now. It's looking good. That is the double rope bed, or I guess you could call it the triple rope bed or the quadruple rope bed. And the thing is, uh, you know, this is okay for like an overnighter, but if you're gonna stay multiple nights, just keep throwing the paracord towards it. And I mean, just weave it into a spider web. Get your kids involved. Just weave, weave, weave. Now, this thing right here, I've got the roof on with these tarp clips, and 
it's going to be more than enough to keep the, uh, the dew off of us tonight. And if it rains, the rain will just roll right off the back. Now, another thing that you can do, if need be, is you can get a big old mosquito net. These uh, mosquito nets that are made for cots, they come with webbing that you can tie off. And you could just literally, you could cover the whole inside of the structure with uh, with webbing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So, but and we may wind up doing that here when we cut the camera off if the mosquitoes keep biting you. Yeah. yeah. Whatever they are. Yeah. I may just wear it. I'm gonna lay right here and I want you to tell me if it pulls the uh, if it pulls the roof down. All right. That ain't even got to be up there. Tell me how much if it, if it actually pulls the roof down in it. You literally just pulled the entire shelter down. Including the roof? No, it didn't move the roof at all. Okay, well I knew, <laughs> I knew it would pull this down. I mean, that's, that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah, your roof's good. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, now see, it was terrible when I started out, but after I wove the paracord holding these loops together and I put the moving blanket on it, it is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's very comfortable. Stay tuned for the next video, four hours of Dave sleeping. And me killing these things on my hands. We gotta wrap this video up. Oh. All right. I mentioned something about being on YouTube for ten solid years, and uh, you know, I, I think it's it's weird. That's kind of a double-edged sword when you think about it, and you think about how I've grown and things like that. And I see other channels that haven't been around as long as I have that are a lot bigger, but that's not that big a deal to me because there was a couple of channels, and I'm not going to name them, but there was a couple of channels that had been doing this for like two or three years before I ever started, and they're still like really low on views and subs, which I think is a shame because, you know, they were the, they were the forefathers of this stuff. You know, they were the ones that, you know, first started bushcrafting and camping and surviving on YouTube, so, you know, uh, yeah, it'd be great to have more views and more subs, you know, but I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that my channel is sustaining itself, and I'm thankful for all the friends that I have, you know, I think it's great, and I gotta give a shout out, this knife that I mentioned on the last video that somebody sent to me, I didn't know who it was, this was sent by my friend Henry Slazak, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, <laughs> but I've been friends with him for a long time, and about seven or eight years ago, he sent me a walking stick. And then about, I think, four or five years ago, he sent me a knife. But he sent me this, Henry. So, Henry, you can tell your buddies to watch this video, and yes, you're getting credit for it. <laughs> he sent me this as a celebration for my 10 years on YouTube. So, and what it is, is it's a, it's a G, GCS knife. It says it's handmade in Europe. But it doesn't say anything on the blade, but you know that it's supposed to be handmade in Europe. But it's supposed to be kind of like a mini tracker design. So thank you, Henry, very much. That's a that's fantastic right there. It makes me very extremely happy. So anyway, um, anything you want to add, Nick? Because it is getting very dark, and we have things to do before we are totally out of darkness. Well, uh, wear long sleeves during spring and early summer, because I think these are chiggers all over me. It could well, how they're getting on me, but I, tell you, people ask I think why. they're, I, I don't know, it's in specific spots that I'm standing out here that they're right. getting on me, so I can't really tell. I see, I blouse my pants in Another. my boots. Nick, aim down here, can you see? <laughs> Look, I blouse my pants in my boots, I wear long sleeves, I wear gloves, and I wear a do-rag. Okay, That way I'm completely covered up. If I have to, I take the do-rag off and cover my head up. Or we have the mosquito net. Either way, I don't like spraying down with chemicals. I would rather be covered up. So, anyway. All right, we got to do something, Nick. We're going to have to get you in that net uh, and get all the other stuff done four nights over. Anything you want to add before we wrap up the video? Uh, 
No, no right. nothing else really. All right. Sounds and then good. don't start building your shelter before it rains. Hey, that's it. That's it. And there's more rain coming. So. Maybe don't go out backpacking when there's rain on the radar. That's it. <laughs> ah, it's probably the better one. So, anyway, thank you for all the friendship and the 10 years of, of views. Uh, thank you for everybody subbing. Thank you for all the comments, the likes, the thumb ups, everything. Thank you for keeping my channel alive for the past 10 years. I haven't given up yet. I'm still hanging in there doing this. Uh, yes, my life's hectic. My life's busy. But I love doing this. I'm going to continue doing it. So until the next one, we shall. See you then. See you later.